Welcome back guys to my YouTube channel. Uh, fellow poultry farmers and uh, poultry investors and all anybody who is in agriculture or wants to invest in agriculture. What comes in your mind when you think about food systems in Africa? That is something which is uh, always ringing in my mind day in day out. I'm also in the food actor. Mm, I run uh, New Hen Farms Enterprise Limited. We are a breeder farm and a hatchery. We supply farmers with the quality SASO F1 chicks. That is a breed of improved Kenyaji chicken, uh, which you can keep for meat and also for eggs, uh, depend with where you I sell at 100 shillings. And recently, I also introduced commercial layers, which I sell at, 100, uh, at 150 Kenya shillings. And the broilers also introduced, I sell at 105 Kenya shillings. That is not the problem. In the past uh, two years, I started uh, teaching farmers about how to start and launch successful poultry farms. I have been getting different uh, opinions, different um, suggestions of farmers, different view in the agricultural sector in Kenya. And I've, I've come to understand one thing, not in, even in Kenya alone, even the whole of Africa. Very many farmers are in a mess. I remember my story while I was growing up back in the village. I'm from UK. UK in Kenya is another name for Okambani. So I'm from uh, Cumberland, a uh, place called um, Mboni. And uh, that's the place where I grew up. I remember my father being a coffee farmer. And uh, my mother was also doing some pottery over there in the home, the indigenous Kenyaji. And uh, they were doing some... Um, uh, uh, African leaf vegetables uh, because my mother had also had um, a grocery place in the market where she used to market. But one thing I realized with them for the, all the years they were doing that, what they were able to get from uh, that uh, investment, that uh, coffee farm, or that uh, small indigenous Kenyaji pottery farming was very little. In fact, they could not be able even to feed us, the whole family. And I came to realize something as they continue to grow, to grow, I realized there is a system in the food systems. And I realized this when I started teaching farmers on how to start pottery farms. Because that is something I've done for the last around, uh, I think, eight years doing pottery farming. I've come to learn a lot. There is a very serious challenge when it comes now to food systems. Uh, the national government is trying, but I don't think... They have very nice uh, suggestions about the food systems, but I don't think they are going to implement. I don't know why these things which comes now with the political class, they always fail. They always fail. Like when you look on the food strategy in the bottom-up economic agenda of uh, the current government, they are talking of very nice policies. So now farmers should implement some of these policies in their poultry farms, they are coming up with some um, learning centers, they are coming up with some production centers, but you kind of look on now, they are being implemented, then you, they fail, mostly of they fail. Like where I am in Bungoma, we have uh, sometimes back uh, the current governor of Bungoma, in, uh, in his first time introduced a, a slaughterhouse here, it's called, it's the, I think it's the largest in western region, it's called the the Chuele slaughterhouse is for chicken. The assumption was that there is a lot of chicken in the Bungoma County. And um, what was happening, it was launched by the governor. It is a, they tried to do the slaughters, it never worked. Another private investor also leased the same. It never worked out. Then I kind of asked myself, why are these things failing? Is a question which we need to debate as a stakeholders and come up with solutions. And uh, me, my parents being an example of how they did their farming, there is a problem. And the problem now comes now to the knowledge dissemination, their know-how, the farming systems which farmers are going to adopt. And um, you realize very many farmers, they don't know what to do. So poultry farmers and uh, also investors, uh, is high time we come up with strategies or now we are going to change the wood systems. All the same will be a, a problem. Like now as we talk, uh, around uh, according now to FAO, 
around uh, out of 10 people um only two are, are food secure around eight people are food insecure and there are cases of um undernutrition and if you get the feed there is also some case of uh, over nutrition and that is what is happening and it is because of poor farming systems so is high time farmers we come together and uh, through my research and through the videos i've been doing about agriculture i have realized is because very many farmers they lack knowledge how they can do it they lack knowledge on how they can mechanize it for example my father could not even value had his coffee I'm thinking of doing something to my father's coffee uh, in Mboni. They have been uh, depending on a certain cooperative there. I'm not going to mention it. For the last, of a, I think, over 50 years. My grandfather was also in the same cooperative. My father continued with the farming coffee in the same cooperative. Then I was just looking at it. The, the amount of money they get now from the raw coffee they sell to the cooperative is very little money. And they do the work. So I was just thinking, can we come up with something, a model? If you are an expert, maybe in a certain area, you come out and you train farmers. Like myself, I want to show you also some they have introduced. Think about this thing we have uh, discussed, and now we can be able to improve it, and now we can be able now to work on it in the area where you are. Because now agriculture, without agriculture, we can do nothing. Without agriculture, there is no food. And without good food systems, we have no food now which is enough now for to feed now Kenyans and also the whole of Africa. So things on now, you're going to do it. So uh, I want to show you, uh, we are intro I'm introducing New Hen Farms. We are introducing another model. Uh, we were able, through now the support you accord to us, through the purchases you normally do for the chicks and also for the feeds and also for the consultation fee you normally send to me, we have been able now to get another piece of land where we want to come up with a demo farm uh, we have been producing a lot of manure in our breeder farm here uh, around um we, i'm doing around five tons in a month of organic chicken manure in my breeder farm let me just flip my camera so that you may see my breeder farm so uh, i've been thinking why can't i now use this land now which we have acquired where we have our hatchery and uh, then we also learn some other forms of farming there, the modern forms of farming. I'm going to involve very many stakeholders. I'm going to involve um, um, agronomists. I am going to involve experts in certain fields of agriculture so that we may be able to transform this thing and come up with something. I don't want to be, I don't want the time I will be dying to, be, to leave now this country with no impact. I want at least to have impacted the lives of very many people. One thing which gives me a lot of satisfaction is when I see this breeder farm, all the hatchery, all the distribution, when I see that one border border guy benefiting from the works we are doing, that is what gives me satisfaction. When I see that person, who washes even the drinkers here, all the feeders, I see that driver, I see that uh, border border guy, I see that one person transforming their lives through now agriculture in this value chain under uh, under me that is the thing which gives me now the greatest satisfaction so i'll be now launching this demo farm and i'm calling upon all stakeholders supporters um, the people who produce seeds the people who are, have a know-how on agriculture i'm calling upon all of you let's come together and the good thing the way i've been documenting now the poultry farming step by step i'll be also the, the be documenting each and every step so that every farmer wherever he or she is can be able to learn without even now coming to our farm or even now investing a lot of money because if farmers get the knowledge they are going to do the best and they are going to exploit the opportunities which now come with the poultry farm so that is the thing i'm thinking about so i mean in my breeder farm uh, i want to show you so this is where we are going to start um the learning so this is my office you see here and uh, this is now my breeder house it's a two story i'm not going to go there but i can show you i've been uh, doing in the previous videos if you have never been here let me just stand here i have um i've not disinfected my shoes let me stand here 
So here is my breeder farm. So it's a story building. I've been showing farmers on how they can be able now to construct a uh, pottery house. So here we are. Eh? So I'll be la I'll be take you step by step so that you may be able to learn or now you can be able to implement the same in your pottery farm and be able to succeed. And the one thing with us, we don't leave you after we sell to you. We normally make sure we learn. So um, this is now my my new space where we, be, we shall be having our classes. And this is now how our class will be will, will be looking like. So I will start here. I will just be using the resources I have, just the little resources I have, so that I may be able now to deliver the content now to you and be able now to learn the best ways you can be able to start a pottery farm. Allow me to take you now to some of the things we have been doing in the past. So uh, those who are wondering, what we do, my company is called um, New Hen Farms Enterprise Limited. Here is my contact. I'm in Kenya, plus 254, uh, one, uh, seven, uh, plus 257172130083. So that's my number, as you can see. So I have been offering a variety of products now, combining it with some knowledge now to farmers about poultry farming. So I normally sell uh, day old chicks, as you can see. That's my number. I normally specialize in Imbrus Kenyeji chicken. I have two breeds now, the mother stock of Sasso and also the mother stock of Kenibro. So you are going to get either Sasso F1 or Kenibro F1. You are going to get at only 100 Kenya shillings. Um, either commercial layers, we are outsourcing currently, but in the next uh, two to three years, we are going to start now breeding the same in our breeder farm as per our strategic plan. So. Commercial area to sourcing, we are selling at 150. And if you need now the, the Mbru Kenyeji at point of lay, POL is point of lay. If you need now the commercial layer at point of lay, we are going to give you at 850. The same case applies now to Sasso point of lay and the Kenny Bros at point of lay. So there are farmers who don't want to struggle with the process of brooding. I normally ensure that we also take care of you and we ensure that we brood our chicks to the best standard so that we may be able now to ensure that you as the farmer, you can be able now to get the right chicks and be able to succeed in your poultry farming journey. So these are now the brooded chicks. So one week old, you can get at 140 Kenya shillings. We have two weeks at 170 Kenya shillings. We have three weeks at 220 Kenya shillings. We have four weeks at 280 Kenya shillings. We have five weeks at 300 Kenya shillings. Six weeks at 320 Kenya shillings. Seven weeks at 350 Kenya shillings, um, eight weeks at 400, then nine weeks at 450. Then you can get 10 weeks at 500 Kenya shillings. These ones we are going to ensure that you get them fully vaccinated, and we are also going to ensure that you get the necessary knowledge and now you are going to take care of the chicken so that you may be able to succeed in your poultry farm. Uh, we don't provide uh, those one alone. In the previous videos, you have seen me train you. Or now you can be able to make your own uh, chicken feed. Uh, currently, we have chick mash. We have introduced now the chick mash at 3,750 Kenya shillings for 50 kgs. We have also introduced now the growers mash at 3,150 for 50 kgs. We have also introduced now the layers mash at only 50, at only 30, 50 for 50 kgs. Um, we have been training you on how to produce feeds now using the concentrate. We have the 20% concentrate at, uh, we are selling at only 8,000 Kenya shillings, the 10% at 50,000 Kenya shillings. And also the broiler concentrate, we are selling at uh, 8,000 Kenya shillings. We also supply you farmers with now the fertilized eggs at 900 Kenya shillings. So that is my number and I've uh, also signed it is from our farm to your farm. So this is where we are. We shall be having now our lessons. This is where we'll be writing what we are going to discuss in that certain day so that you may be able to understand what is going to happen. So I have done very many modules on poultry farming and uh, I'll be glad to be sharing more with you on how you can be able now to get it right in your poultry farming investment so welcome to my class this is uh, the thing i wanted to introduce to you so that you may be able to learn more about poultry farming without a struggle and uh, we are not just uh, here to sell to you we ensure that you get it right from the beginning to the end you learn i want to contribute so much in the food system in africa so 
uh, in the long run, if uh, God permits me, we are going to have uh, some uh, new. We going to have some new hen in Uganda, Tanzania, mm. Nigeria. I've been seeing you. I have been seeing you, South Africa. We shall be having now some other outlets there where we shall have where we shall deploy some of our experts who will be now close to you as a farmer to ensure that you get the right thing at any given point. So guys, uh, you can support me through maybe giving us an order or through maybe you donate it to us or through supporting us. Anything which comes now to new and farms, it normally every shilling you bring here, we normally combine it with another shilling, then it changes lives of people. Not our lives alone, but lives of very many people who depend on this farm. So I also have a team which I trained on the pottery house construction. So if you don't know how you're going to construct even the pottery house, we are going to ensure that we do it on your behalf to ensure that you get it right from the beginning to the end. So guys, welcome. If you are watching me for the first time, my name is Lenson Momo and I assist farmers in Lounge successful pottery farms. So I'll be guiding you. Welcome so much, step by step. And if you have any question or any concern, I'll be here to guide you to ensure that you succeed from the beginning now to the end. So guys, I want to appreciate you. We shall be having our classes here. Let's meet on the next video where we are going now to start our class, the Brooding 101, which now troubles very many farmers. I'll be there as your lecturer and I'll be guiding you. The I was once a lecturer, but this, I see that spirit is still boiling me. So I'll be now a teacher now in the food systems and also on the food strategies, which can be sustainable to you as an investor or as a pottery farmer, so that you may be able to succeed. So you can be able to call me. My number is plus two five four seven one seven two one three zero eight three, and I'll be able to assist you a successful pottery farm. Up to the end. Let's meet guys on the next video. Thank you so much.